So I was going to make a video on the Zane build that I was running for the Twitch Rivals tournament and just have been running recently anyway because it's pretty good. But over the last sort of half an hour to an hour by the time this video goes out, there was a hotfix that was put through with some pretty hefty balance changes that I just wanted to make you aware of. There's also another few bits and pieces that Gearbox wanted to say on the subject. First, if you want to automatically apply these changes to your game, you need to just sort of wait in the menu for a bit. It should pop up on the UI somewhere saying that there is an update available. And the only way that you can get it is being online and then sort of waiting at the main menu whilst it updates nothing else it's not like a patch that needs to be added in all of this stuff is server side as well on the subject of performance problems gearbox had this to say we are aware that the below list does not include issues that the community is immediately concerned with we are hard at work evaluating performance problems and potential solutions for them in the meantime these are some of the balance updates that we can do quickly now they go over a few bugs but as you've seen on screen they're not particularly exciting to be honest nothing really game changing at all just activation range of new use stations and the like. The balance changes though are pretty important. So I did my best to show before and afters of the changes to show how impactful they are because it has a lot to do with farming, farming loot, torg shotgun damage, the like. So we'll go through them one by one, showing comparisons of before and after on screen when we can, because I was still in the game when this patch came out, meaning that it didn't update. If you just wanted to know what the balance changes are without seeing comparisons, then it's the Iridium Crystal farm in Voracious Canopy is a lot less frequent, meaning you can't do it as much. I've also scaled down the amount of loot drops in Mayhem mode, which is pretty massive to be honest. Tog shotgun sticky damage has been reduced by a decent amount. They've also reduced the E-Tech shotgun elemental damage from flesh off your bone to a lot. Chipper Cabbage dropped too much of his hard earned loot, so they've reduced it, I think. Adjusted spawn rate of the loot tinks in the mansion. They're special again, instead of 100% guaranteed appearance all the time. They've also removed the pain sounds from Troy during this boss fight. Best change ever. The first one is that the Iridium Crystals in Voracious Canopy grow less frequently, meaning that the Iridium Crystal farm that you could do there by going to the place on screen, dropping down, farming the crystals, going back out, going back in, doing the same thing over and over again, is less likely to happen. This is what it used to be like, this is what it is currently, so a lot better, unfortunate if you were farming Iridium from this spot. Scaled on the amount of loot drops in Mayhem mode, we'll come back to this as this is probably the most important change in there, but Torg Shotgun Sticky Damage has also been reduced. Here is some gameplay of me using a Tog shotgun, not even a very good one, on Flak in order to kill the Grave Warden boss over and over again. These are the Tog shotguns now on both Flak and Moe's. These builds built around just being able to fire them consistently and do a lot of critical damage. You can see how little damage it does in comparison. You can no longer one shot a boss with one magazine. You can farm the bosses still, but it's a lot slower. You need to do the right damage in the right phases, otherwise you have mobs spawning and it just gets a whole lot more messy. The ones I showed you before didn't have plus normal damage or plus shotgun damage. They were all neutral to sort of show it off. So yeah, that's a pretty hefty change in comparison to what it is now. And with the loot drop rate being reduced, it's certainly not as efficient as just farming Chupacabra at the moment. They've also reduced the E-Tech shotgun elemental damage from flesh off your bones to a lot. Unfortunately, I can't test this one as I don't have an E-Tech shotgun. The Chupacabra dropped too much of his hard earned loot. I guess this is less of a, he drops a lot less loot now, but more the Chupacabra drops about 95% of the world loot drops, meaning that if you want to have a chance of farming everything in the game, that's the easiest way to do it. So he drops a lot less of the gear in total, as opposed to him dropping less legendaries per run, if that makes sense. So Chupacabra doesn't drop everything like he used to, but not sure specifically what he gets now. They've also adjusted the spawn rate of the loot tinks in the mansion. No doubt you've heard about this one and used it. You go to the area that I'm showing you on screen and a loot tank 100% was guaranteed to sort of run out there so you could kill him, reset, go back in, kill him, reset, go back in. Now it's inconsistent. You can go to that area and sometimes they are not there. So it's not as consistent as it used to be. It still appears, but not as often as you'd hope. And finally, removed pain sounds from Troy for his boss fight. This is what it used to sound like. Let's do this. this is what he sounds like now. I'm gonna crush you!
But yeah, let's talk about the amount of loot drops in Mayhem mode being reduced. This is again me farming a Grave Warden a couple of times on Flak as I was gearing up and leveling up. Uh, and you can see roughly how often legendaries drop. It was like three to four per run. Now showing you some gameplay after I did it on both Flak and Moe's. And you can see for Flak, one legendary drops. For Moe's, nothing drops. I didn't want to run it too often, but it definitely seems that there's a big reduction in how many legendaries that you get from doing this. After testing it on Tuba Carbridge, it's still fairly consistent. You're still able to get like one legendary. So like that's still a more consistent farm, but you can't just keep farming the Grave Ward and hoping to get three to four legendaries a run, which I think is, you know, fair enough at this case. So there's some pretty important and impactful balance changes in this hotfix. Do I agree with the changes? Yeah, I think all of these go over certain areas that made it very easy to farm gear in an exploitative way, just farming a loot tank, just going to a specific area to get iridium crystals, being able to farm one of the top bosses on the hardest difficulty in one round with a blue tog shotgun, I think is pretty ridiculous. So all of these changes I can agree with. It's not often I respond to loot farming being reduced and legendary drops being reduced in a, yeah, I, I mean, that makes sense. That's fair enough kind of way. However, just my criticism and a bit of a heads up for Gearbox if they ever watch this. One thing that I don't like about these patch notes and it's also in the game quite a lot is how vague they are with numbers and how vague they are with information in general. I'll talk about the game in a second, but going over the balance changes again. Iridium crystals grow less frequently. By how much? Tog shotgun sticky damage has been reduced. I know every weapon's different, but on average, by how much? Scale down the amount of loot drops in mayhem mode. Again, by how much? Especially if you go into like the Mayhem Mode modifiers and sort of look how loot quality is increased. This hasn't changed. It used to say 100% for Mayhem 1, 300 and 500% for Mayhem 2 and 3, respectfully. And that's still the same now, even after this patch. So we have no idea by how much percentage wise legendary drops have gone down after this hotfix. Chupacabridge dropped too much of his hard earned loot. I'm not even really sure what that means. Does that mean he drops less legendaries or just that he drops less of the legendary loot pool? And again, by how much? I don't want to sound like a broken record but I hope you're understanding my point and how changes like this need to give us numbers and stats and also if possible Gearbox just a sentence about each saying why these changes are coming in. I saw Gefalion tweet about this and I agree that when it comes to changing the loot economy just a couple of sentences about their balanced philosophy on what they want to achieve and why these changes are coming in is important to sort of echo to the community hey you guys are getting too much whilst we love that you're getting this amazing loot and all these billions of guns we're putting this change in because of the longevity of the game where i think most of us would go yep that's fair enough that makes sense and this is no doubt why they're doing this change but just as a heads up i would love to hear why some of these changes are coming in exactly what they said about performance that stuff is on the way but big changes to weapons like tog shotguns legendary spawn rate i think it needs more than just a sentence that is incredibly vague you know what i mean but that's just me being nitpicky with the wording of these patches but I do like how Blizzard do it with Overwatch patches with just a sentence about each. Like, oh, we nerfed Bastion because we felt that he was too good here, there and everywhere. You get a bit of context as to why that change has come in. And you also get information on how much he was nerfed by as an example. So I like these changes. Just a bit of a heads up though, Gearbox. I would appreciate that. I'm surprised they haven't nerfed the Pipe Bomb. I'm surprised that that's not in there. But I really like this patch. And I'm quite surprised at how quickly it's come in. Just under a week after launch. Performance issues should be fixed along the way, but seeing as we've gone over a lot of news in this video, I figured I'd add a little bit more instead of putting it in another video, perhaps tomorrow or later on. Tomorrow, the first episode of the Borderlands show will be starting. Uh, it'll be starting at 6 p.m. BST, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern, and they're gonna go into some detail talking about the Bloody Harvest event, and they'll be talking to Paul Sage. So if there's any update on news, that's probably where we're going to get it. But speaking of the Bloody Harvest event, some information was dated to mind by a fella called Stephen Chapman. He's a quick four minute video going over everything that they've found so far, so go check it out. The most interesting thing is some Balex voice lines, now that he's in the AI of your ship. We're gonna be hearing Ice-T say, all right, it's the bloody harvest. I wanna see costumes people, slutty robots, slutty vault monsters. I don't care, just make it slutty, can't wait. But also there's some bits and pieces on new heads, new weapon trinkets, new cosmetics, 
cosmetics obviously, as well as a couple new enemies. If you don't want to find out any more, then you don't need to, but I will link the video below in case you want to check out what we know so far. I know some people don't really like date minded stuff, but there's not a huge amount there. No doubt we're going to get dates and times and stuff like that. I'm going to hear more about it tomorrow. To end this video, we should have hit 50,000 subscribers on the YouTube channel by the point of this video going out. Thank you very much. These last couple of weeks have been crazy. I'm struggling to keep up with everything going on at the moment, but I'm going to get all of the builds and guides and stuff out the way and they're done. And if there's anything content wise that you'd like to see, do let me know. I'm really enjoying making a lot of Borderlands stuff. I'm still relatively new to the game as a whole. I don't know everything. I'm not crazy smart like a lot of other content creators, but I'm doing my best to learn as much as possible, as fast as possible. So thanks for all of the support. I'll do my best to not let you down. That's everything I wanted to go over. I didn't mean to sort of go off on a tangent midway in and start ranting about patch notes, but that's just my opinion on everything at the moment. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care. See you soon.